I grew up on Parsons Cross between 1966 and 1976 and Parsons Cross is a, a very large council estate, a massive council estate in, in the north of Sheffield. It's actually, I worked out, it's actually bigger in land area than Canterbury, which is where I did my PhD actually. And uh, it is a very poor estate. I've, I've heard some statistics recently that it's the fourth poorest area in the UK. So part of the estate was built by um, Italian prisoners of, prisoners of war and uh, our houses were definitely one of those that were built by the prisoners of war. It's very strange standing here because these two houses... Behind... Clearly there's lots of things happening on the estate that you could define as cultural and they are really interesting things. So one of the, uh, one of the things is my mum is in a singing group. She's been in it for a long time, run by Kate Thomas. And she and um, my mum's a very enthusiastic member of the group, and uh, it's it's really a uh, fantastically successful group. They, they I think there was 25 when we visited, but that's kind of just that's the average number that turned up. I think there's about 30 in the group when they're all there, and they sing really really beautiful songs. Often it takes someone from what I, what I perceive to be more of a middle class background coming in to, to organise a bit. Like that, the, the people who've run the women's group on Monday mornings, and, and perhaps Kate as well, seem to be sort of coming in a little bit from the outside, and that kind of seems to be a sort of catalyst to get things going. discovery of art on the estate and it, it really does come down to quite a sort of simple moment. I went round to my friend's friend Will's house in, when I was around 16. His dad was a painter and he copied Dutch masters mainly. The walls were covered in them and there was also sculptures around as well. At that moment, I mean at the time I was absolutely blown away. Like when you're a kid, experience is experience, isn't it? So I didn't think of it as a life-changing moment, because you don't. But when, when the time, you know, sort of over time later, uh, I did think it was a really life-changing thing. Because I, I went on, what I started to do fairly soon after that, I started to do some drawing myself. And I, uh, I was doing my A-levels at the time. I went back to school after I'd finished my A-levels to get O-level art and I went to art college. So it kind of did change my life completely. Uh, you know, if I, whenever I've thought about this house, because I lived away from Sheffield quite a bit, whenever I've thought about this house and what's, you know, that, that first time I came here, that's the one that stood out. It's, I think it's, it's Jan van Eyck. Jan it? van Eyck. Um, he did actually have permission to so map it. Not the map, at the Graves, the right. art gallery, uh, when it was closed. So he was an art director, uh, Mr. Constantine, I think it was. And he let him in, and Dad would take his easel and his oil paints and sit in front of one, you know, one of the pictures there. I went round to lots of other people's um, friends' houses, and they all looked a bit similar to ours. You know, they all had the similar ornaments and similar wallpaper. And I come round here, and it was like, wow, you know, what's going on? Sort of thing, you know. And there was a really calm atmosphere as well, like a really sort of relaxed atmosphere, which I thought, you know, it sort of felt, felt great really. It felt really great, you know, it felt like um, a whole different type of place really, that I'd never been to before, I'd never been to a place like it. And the whole day was really emotional, I mean, I suppose the, the first thing to say is going back into his mum's house, his mum's died recently, and the last time I'd been in the house she was there sat in, sat in a chair. So to go into the house it really, caught me up, you know, and knowing in fact that, you know, the next day after we were there, his bro him and his brothers were going to basically take the house apart, start, 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 uh, start packing it up, so I was really emotional, and Will's a really good friend, um, we're really close in some ways, so it was great to be walking 
I mean, part of it was, part of it, I mean, if you're really old, but the sort of, if you like, the nice part was to see that that the material fabric of the estate still exists, and in fact, in a lot of ways, it's better. When we walked up Collie Road t towards the school, Collie Road actually looks better now, much better state physically than it was way back then. So that's Cobby's house. Cobby, yeah. Cobby Thorpe, yeah. That one. Um, do you remember his dog? No, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't really go around there. Pinto. He used to have a little uh, Jack Russell Terrier. Well, the family did. And, uh, I remember its name, Pinto, and it used to. Uh, they used to take it ratting. <laughs> all, all the only ratting. graffiti I've actually seen on the estate is the, is the stuff done on the front of uh, Remington Community Centre. Uh, and it was. Uh, uh, we interviewed this guy, Lee. Who um, I think led this project on um, really decorating the front of Remington Community Centre. After I've left school, right, they were, um, they were running um, workshops where um, I got involved myself and um, and, and just learnt like certain be just learnt basic basics of um, of how to paint and then this that and the other right. and then and then eventually I got brought on into onto bigger projects where I'd be on a, a summer project like this on a painting the wall but being um, instructed how to do it as well yeah. and then from there I just kept on building myself up building up my, my own reputation building up my skills and uh, yeah that's how I got into it really yeah he's yeah. actually making a living out of, out of his graffiti art now he's actually making a living out of painting when after after doing art college I, I got into St Martin's to to do a master's in sculpture and I didn't do it and I didn't do it because I thought then art is too much about elitism maybe people can start to think about what culture and art means, or maybe they don't even have to think about it as long as they're just doing it. You know, that's one of the things that's very noticeable when, when we're at Kate's singing group, they don't sit down and theorise about the nature of culture and art in this day, they just bloody do it, don't they? And that's brilliant. And, and they were all like so enthusiastic and so, so just, just so totally engaged with it, weren't they? I mean, it's not, there was no question about, you know, that this is, there was no question marks in their head about whether this is a good thing or not. They were just loving it. Still to this day represents for me some kind of liberation. This, I, I think the best art sort of embodies, you know, ideas about human liberation, and actually that the artist in create in, 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 in being involved in the creation of, of works of art can actually it can actually be about a liberating process for the artist. So it, can't, it couldn't be a, for me it couldn't be about anything else. Perhaps a structural engineer thinks that about structural engineering, then that's fine. But for me, art has always been about aspiring to free oneself in some way. <laughs>